Okay guys, uh, I was going to make a video here about the charger -y and my experience with the charger -y. That's the BMS, the battery management system, which includes this display unit, the, the shunt, optionally the DCC or the uh, DC contactor, the solid state relay. You can use a normal relay and the BMS main unit here. And I have come to the conclusion that this is not a BMS that I can currently recommend for a lot of reasons. And I was about to go through and make this video and demonstrate some of the reasons <clears throat> for this. And I ran into yet another problem that has further sold me on the idea of abandoning the chargery. So this DCC is supposed to have a, a pre-charge circuit effectively for the capacitors and the inverter. Now, the procedure that I follow in order for that pre-charge circuit to work properly is to, if the system is completely dead and unpowered, you know, if the inverters are off, they're not connected to AC, is to first, you know, make sure that the battery is off so that I, you know, flip that switch to off the other thing you can do is put this into storage mode or in storage mode you can hit stop and that'll that'll turn that off i then connect the battery using that battery switch now what i had seen before and so i've seen various behavior now so this is not consistent which is even worse but even in that state with that dc contactor turned off i would i would move this switch from off to two, which connects that battery, that's battery two, <laughs> um, I, I would get a pretty good spark. I'm, that's not supposed to happen. There's not supposed to be enough current flowing in a, when you first do that. That's the whole point of a pre-charge circuit is to avoid that, that spark, which is destroying my switch. It's not good for it. So problem number one, <coughs> excuse me, problem number two. In that off state, if you were to measure the voltages, you'd, you get, in this case, 57 volts. That's, so, so with this off, you can electrocute yourself on, on your battery. And apparently it passes enough current uh, to create a spark. So not great. Today, I went to turn on the system. I had just finished top balancing all of my cells. So I just put them back into a series configuration, hooked, hooked the BMS back up. Made sure everything was okay before I turned it on. I always, you know, make sure the voltages are correct everywhere. I got everything hooked up the way it's supposed to be. <clears throat> and then I, I put the system, I left that off, turned the battery switch on. These were not connected to AC. They were, they were dead. And then I came over here and turned that on and nothing, nothing happened. And the lights came on, but I had no power over here. So I went and checked and my 300 amp class T fuse was blown. I have no idea how that happened. So since I have no idea what happened, I checked, I made sure I didn't have any short circuits. Sure enough, everything seemed fine. So I had to write it off as, I, as, as well, just unexplainable. I replaced the fuse with another one and went through that same procedure, turned on the DC contactor kind of hear like a, it's almost like a bang when that happens, you know, you can hear the, the inrush of current. The power on here came on. This is connected to the same bus that the inverters are connected to. And I was unable to turn on the inverters and I came over here to check the voltage and the voltage was declining. It was maybe around five volts and it was declining. This guy then, you know, this, this shut off. Sure enough, the fuse had blown again. So the inrush of current, this thing was letting, was letting so much current in when I, when I first connected it that it was blowing my 300 amp fuse. Well, the whole point of this box is to prevent that from happening, to be nice to your system, to be nice to the capacitors on my expensive inverters. It's not doing its job. I've tried both of my contactors. Neither of them function the way they're supposed to. So I've now, now I've blown two fuses and these are, I don't know, these are like 30 bucks a whack or something. These are, these are expensive. I'm not even sure if I can go to a store and buy them. 
So now I'm down to my last fuse. I have, I have a spare fuse. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I gonna get this system online? You know, am I really sure there's no sh short circuit going on? So it occurred to me that if I hooked up the inverters to, uh, to split phase, which I, what I, I have to do in order for these to turn on without a battery, they have to be able to synchronize, or I could, you know, disconnect them and operate one at a time if I wanted to. I really didn't want to go through that process. So anyway, I hooked them up to my split phase 240, got them turned on. <laughs> now, funny enough, now this will tell you something about these, how big these capacitors are and how much of a surge there is. I, I turned them on, they synchronized to AC power, the relays latched, and then they, and then immediately uh, the inverter uh uh, disconnected from mains. I saw the lights in the garage here blink. It didn't blow the breaker, but clearly a, an, an insane amount of power went through here to try and charge the capacitors. 10 seconds or so later, it attempted again. The, the mains came back on and, and they stayed on. I measured that I had DC voltage. Sure, sure enough, I've got, I had like 58 volts. It was in absorption mode. This thing had power again, so I figured, all right, now I've got this side of the DC bus on and and charged and the capacitors are full. And so I used my last fuse and I then turned on the battery and everything's fine. It, it was able to charge the battery. I'm able to discharge. It was purely the inrush. I didn't have a short circuit. So that black box was not doing its job. Now, the other thing I'm gonna show you in, an, in the next clip, this main unit here, I'm gonna show you how the, the voltage readings are inaccurate. This is actually the more accurate of the two that I have. The other BMS unit that I have, instead of being off by like 30 millivolts between the cells, these cells are perfectly balanced, but this is saying they're off by 30 millivolts. You know, and, and, I'm, and I'm not using a cheap meter, right? This is a Klein tools. This reads out to three decimal places so I can, you know, I'll read like 3.650 and and I, I have validated with another meter that, that only goes to two places that it's, it shows at least 3.65. That's when I was top balancing and they all measured exactly the same. Charger is reading something different. So not good there. On top of that, the shunt, which is showing minus one amps right now, that, that may or may not be true. <laughs> I don't trust it. But the shunt is not, the hardware is not set up to handle the DC ripple current that comes from connecting an inverter to your battery bank. So these are nice inverters, right? Big capacitors, they're not gonna put a huge amount of ripple current like a cheaper inverter would do. And these are you know pure sine wave, not square wave or modified sine wave. It makes the current reading from the, as read by the shunt on this thing go completely wild. 20 amps one second, 30 amps the next second, 50 amps the next second, 15 amps the next second, all over the map, which means that this thing can't properly cal calculate state of charge. You can't use um, current limiting uh, current limiting features on here if you wanted to. I, I don't, like, you know, you can tell this thing if, if it pulls more than 150 amps or puts more than 150 amps, shut it down. Well, if the, if the, BM, if the shunt isn't reading the proper current, you can't use those features. So again, you know, I, I've got so many issues with the, with the accuracy of this thing and the performance and the fact that the, the DC contactor doesn't do what it's supposed to do. I'm really, at this point, um, fed up with the system. And let's make this even worse. So I have two of these, which is, you know, just fantastic from uh, how much money I've poured into this and I'm not gonna get back. But the lugs in version one of, the, of this DC contactor are way too close to each other, way too short. Now they have fixed this from what I'm told um, based on our feedback, but this can't handle the kinds of lugs. This is a 300 amp relay and they want you to put 300 amps really small lugs. Sorry, I've got to go dig through my uh, box here. There's small lugs with these bolts that are way undersized for the hole, which means the lug can move around way too much. It can run into the cage here and short out. 
the lugs can short between each other. So the feedback, you know, made, made these come out longer, made them further apart. So that should help. But why on earth would they have initially designed it like this in the first place? I mean, that's just, how do you miss that? You're putting big lugs on here. I had lugs on here for three aught wire, right? For appropriate for 300 amps of power. So that's heavy duty wire. And my point with all of this, besides the fact that this V0 is, is terrible from the distance perspective, these, these bars are effectively only, as far as I can tell, they're only supported by the MOSFETs. You can see the, the first wire of the first MOSFET here. Uh, those are drilled into the, this, this bar that goes all the way down this length, the length, and, and there's MOSFETs all down here connected to the circuit board, and this is on top. Well, the pressure of the three gauge, three aught wire caused this to move around and was and, and was moving around because it was moving the pins of the MOSFETs going into the circuit board. So it looks like the MOSFETs are the only thing supporting this. So I'm, I'm trying to handle three aught wire on this thing and, and instead you can see where I've cracked this, you know, whatever this material is that they use to sort of join and stabilize these in a sort of cheap way because these separated and this really started moving and, I, and I'm and I'm bending the pins on the, I mean, come on. So, uh, you know, I, I can't treat this the same as any of my other components. Like I can, I can put an incredible amount of torque and pressure and, and you know, these, these wires can move around and I don't have to worry about it except for the DC contactor. So at, with all those problems, the, the thing that I'm going to absolutely do right off the bat as soon as I can after I do some more research to figure out exactly what I'm going to do. But the basic principle will be I'm going to go back to an actual um, so, uh, physical relay, DC contactor, not, not the solid state thing, with a pre-charged circuit. Because what I want to, to make sure I have happen is when this, when this is telling the relay to be off, it's off and I don't have voltage over here. I can't electrocute myself on this thing. I want that relay to be disconnected and off. Nothing can pass through it. And I want that pre-charge circuit to come on and give the, the resistor, you know, five, 10 seconds or whatever, time to charge the capacitors before the main relay turns on. That's the way it should operate and it is not doing that. So I'm, I'm just, I'm done with this thing. Oh, then, yeah, here's one more. Let me throw this in here too. <laughs> I mean, the list goes on. I forget what, you know, everything that's bothering me about this. I was pumping 110, 120 amps in, into the battery charging yesterday. Everything was cold. I had max five degrees Fahrenheit temperature rise, uh, you know, anywhere in the system, bus bars, everything, you know, fuse, except the DCC. This had a 20 degrees Fahrenheit temperature rise and the fan started cycling on and off. So, and that's 120 amps. What's going to happen at 250, 300 amps, the maximum rating for this thing? I don't trust that it can do that. So again, yet another reason for I'm just done with this. And you can kind of hear in my voice how frustrated I am if you've been watching my videos. <laughs> so, and you know, because I, I forget the exact price of this, but I know the, the, the contactor, the shunt, the, the BMS, all of that was something like 300 bucks a pop. And I've got two batteries. So I've sunk $600 into something that I'm thinking of getting rid of. And because they're in China, I can't like return it. And I've, I'm probably past the return period anyway. And I've, I, you know, I, I basically have lost 600 bucks. And, you know, maybe I can convince somebody to buy this on the cheap um, because it, maybe it works for their application. I don't know. Um, but, and now I've got to go hunt for something else. But at least for now, I'm in a, I'm in a state where uh, I can function. I can do a capacity test. That's what I'm going to do today using these inverters and I just, I'm gonna keep in mind how I need to turn this system on and off so I don't blow this expensive fuse. Forgot to insert this into the video, so I'll just cut this in here at the end. You can see the amperage there, just all over the place, 31 amps, 50 amps, 30 amps, completely inaccurate. The load on the inverter right now is a very consistent 2,050 watts on the AC side or 2,120 watts on the DC side. 
And that's measured by the Victron shunt. And it is, it's readout is stable. So in theory, I can, I can smooth this out and I might do it just, just for the fun and sake of learning. But uh, with a resistor and a capacitor, I can create a low pass filter and add that to the shunt. So I, I might do that just, just to see, but that doesn't mean that I, I'm happy with this situation. So anyway, what's happening here is just a load test and uh, I'll, post, I'll post those results in the forums. I'm not gonna do any special video here, but um, you know, minus the saying that I had the AC loads up to 9.5 kilowatts, which meant the battery was at a little over 11 kilowatts and everything was, was happy. So, all right, again, thanks for watching.